Hello, this is Professor Raymond, and I'm here to show you a how to go through these school databases in order to find primary literature for a paper that you might have to write in a class such as mine. Um, there are a couple of different ways to do this, and I'm going to run you through uh, three different ways of finding things. One way is to sign in to my LFCC, just like you're used to doing if you want to get onto Blackboard or SIS. Uh, but instead, what I'm going to pick is Library Services and do a quick search here. I'm going to put in my favorite uh, terms, autism and oxytocin, and see what I can find. I'm going to limit my search to articles because I want scientific articles on this and press search and I'm also going to limit my results to just the last three years and I've got 72 items uh, in the search here some are reviews like this one so if I look at this It takes me here. I can actually get the PDF of the article, which will give me the whole thing. Um, because this is a review paper, though, this is not going to count as a primary literature article. This is a review article. It's secondary literature. Um, go back to my results and pick one of the other ones. So perhaps this one, oxytocin enhances hippocampal spike transmission by modulating fast spiking neurons. This is from the journal Nature. And I can get my PDF and to just download it as a PDF. Here it is. And this one is a primary uh, article. If you're not sure what primary article means, you might want to go back to my other video that describes primary articles. This is so this is one way of finding primary literature. Another way of finding primary literature would be to go to the Lord Fairfax website. From there you can pick libraries and here on the library site you see Academic Search Complete. I'm going to click that and put in my search terms. Notice this is EBSCO host. This is a really good way of searching for things. I'll put in autism and because I want to have both of those. I'm also going to click this box that says full text and the one that says scholarly peer-reviewed journals because I only want results that will show me that. And here I have them, but once again I've got kind of a wide set of dates. I'm going to limit this to the last three years. And I've still got 33 articles here. Um, I could get my full text of this one and this is a nice article that is primary. It's in the journal Molecular Autism. Um, here's a review article. See it says research review. Um, this one says brief report. A brief report is not going to count toward your assignment as a primary article, but it could be very helpful uh, for background information. Here, non-synonymous single nucleotide variations of the human oxytocin receptor gene and autism spectrum disorders, a case control study in a Japanese population and functional analysis. Now, this one is a primary research article written by the people who did the research. Notice it says research here, that often tells you this is also in the journal Molecular Autism. Right. So this would be a good article to use. 
One more way of searching is to go to Google, but instead of doing a regular Google search, I'm going to go to something called Google Scholar. Google Scholar limits the searches to, um, to journals, peer-reviewed journals. It leaves out all of the web stuff that is secondary, tertiary, or worse, um, and just gets me to the scientific literature. Once again, the um, date range is kind of wide, so I'm going to limit it to the last three years. Now when you do something like this, sometimes when you click on one of these choices, it can get you to a real PDF of the whole um, article. That's what you need. But sometimes when you do it, it will take you to a paywall. where it says, if I want it, I can purchase it for $41.95. Now, there's no reason for you to need to pay for access to any articles. If you find something under Google Scholar, you can copy the title and then go back to our school's search site. And if you search for that and we have that article, it'll come up and it'll use your student credentials in order to prove that you have already the rights for access and you'll be able to get it. If our school doesn't have a subscription to that particular journal, which for this one it doesn't, Neurochemistry International, then what you can do is go to the library and ask them to do a interlibrary loan to get it for you. Now that takes a little while and you can only really use interlibrary loans if you haven't been procrastinating and you've got plenty of time to wait. One other thing that you can do with Google Scholar, uh, which can be very helpful, is to create an alert. So if I put in um, an alert query for autism and oxytocin, and have it send it to my email account. Um, I don't think I'd want it to go to my Gmail. Instead, I would have it go to my Lord Fairfax Community College um, result. And um, I could have, I could then create this alert and it would send me email on a regular basis every time a new scientific article came up that was about autism and oxytocin. If you have something you're really interested in, it's a good idea to create some of these alerts and then you can check on them regularly. If there's a disease you're really interested in and you want to know every time something new is published about it, this is a good way of doing it. So, um, thank you for watching, and if you have any difficulty with figuring out how to do this, you can also get help from the library, or you can ask me individually in class. Good luck.